Don't be ashamed or afraid to work different roles mm -hmm. within manufacturing. Whatever it takes to get in the door, you have to outshine everyone. Hi everybody and welcome back to Chat with Charlie. We are very thrilled to have Rob here with us today. Thank you, Rob, for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, it's Charlie, your go-to for mastering the art of public speaking and career advancement. Welcome to Chat with Charlie, where industry professionals share their invaluable insights and advice to help you excel within your desired industry. Get ready to dive deep into the minds of accomplished individuals as they unravel strategies, share personal experiences, and provide actionable tips that you won't get anywhere else. Whether you're looking to advance your career, start a new venture, or simply stay ahead in your industry, this is the place to be. Tune in and level up your expertise with Chat with Charlie. So, you know how I like to do things. Okay. So I wanna play a little public speaking game. Are you willing to play a little game with me today? I am, but I'm pretty terrible at games. <laughs> So, so, it's okay. It might, with me. it might make this even better. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. The game is called the um game. So you will pull a topic out of the cup. We will have 30 seconds on the clock. And you will just talk about that topic for as long as you can before you say the word um. When you say um, you toss that topic Choose another one and talk about that one to as long as you can until the 30 seconds is up. All right. It's not a hard one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you ready? Chips. Okay. I used to love getting chips when I was, as a little kid. Mm -hmm. At the corner store, you know, the little old lady that used to sell candy. Corner store, if you like the uh, flaming hot, mm -hmm. get the. Um... <laughs> Next. That's okay. Pull it down wood. Yes. Pork. Pork. Bacon in the morning. The best thing you can ever have. Throw it in the bacon, in the, in the microwave, or the air fryer, or the uh, actual oven. Just gotta have it. No matter what. And morning bacon, morning breakfast. How many pieces do you like? like are you a three or four person? I don't or just eat pork. Two? Oh, so you really miss out. So you just do turkey. You just turkey bacon. Turkey bacon tastes like a little cardboard. Oh. Like there, throw a lot of syrup on it. You can go on about your way. It's time. <laughs> you did it. I don't eat pork, okay? <laughs> I wish I could. That's all right. Only thing I do eat. That's the only thing you do eat. Look yeah. at that. Okay, so that's just to loosen us up, to yeah. relax, and thank you for playing. So let's get started for what really the people are really want to know about, and it's about you. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you to your current industry? So a little bit about my background. Over 20 plus years as a project manager, manufacturing engineer within the realm of continuous improvement change agent. So I've been around all of the industries within what one would say within all four walls, understanding the running plants, being a change agent for plants and traveling for the past, previously for the past seven years at almost 100%. So it's been a little burnout, but now I just transitioned back to actually a direct hire and what exactly do you do now? What's your role? Right now, I am a director of manufacturing over 21 sites. Wow. So 19 sites American and 20 and like four sites that's overseas. So. Oh my goodness. So you're still running. So no, I'm not running. I am managing our headquarters mm -hmm. as in the manufacturing site, but I'm co-managing the other sites as we um, acquire more sites and just the ones that are some of the organizations that I'm building. Would that fall under architecture or engineering? Engineering. Or engineering. Engineering on the mechanical, on the mechanical side and project management side, but on the same token, because it's doing manufacturing, mm -hmm. one has to have a little bit of understanding of everything when you speak about electrical architect, or then you use that part of your uh, project management side, continuous improvement, mm -hmm. that you use your analytical side and just making things lean. So that's used as part of the business side. So it's, with, from my career, having an understanding of all four walls, mm -hmm. when I speak of all four walls, all four walls within manufacturing. Okay. So understanding the HR, understanding the operations, understanding those pieces, not having to be subject experts, but a strong understanding of everything within it so you can run an organization and run it smoothly. Well, thank you for explaining that to me. So what motivated you to enter into your current field? 
today? Of today, it was the background from the past seven years being mm-hmm. a, um, a consultant, but prior to that, it came from just my career itself. I started off as a mechanical engineer, and my first internship was with my family organization mm-hmm. that was as a project manager. So it's uh, come from Illinois. You have to understand just how to get the tools. Mm-hmm. You have to understand where to get things so if you ever become a project manager, if you ever become an owner of the organization, you know how much actual nuts and bolts cost if an operator, if you or your subcontractor is trying to get over on you. So those are the things I learned growing up and then just matriculated just throughout my career when football didn't work out, I moved back into that realm because it's always something new. Mm-hmm. Whether I'm building the same home down the street, whether it's in construction, it's going to be something different, new things that I'm going to see, even if it could be the same exact home. That makes sense. Nice side note, you said Illinois. Illinois to Texas? Uh, Big difference? Big difference. Very big difference. So how I got here from Illinois was I worked with an organization that had a project. I was doing a 90% gut rehab, but then part of my project, I was also working with the organization for continuous improvement. So I was doing project management on one side and then continuous improvement on the other side with oil and gas. Mm -hmm. But the project was a two year project that was here in Houston for oil and gas, Uh Monday through Thursday, opposed to me always flying back and forth and using my other time working on a project that was getting ready to start up. A ramp up of a project that was for the um, operator owner is you're just, it's everything on the ideas of what do we want to do? How are we going to do it? Get the designers, everything. So that was a two year process. So I saw it as I was, I was a young adult. I was very single. I was not married yet. So I said, it's a great opportunity for me to move to Houston mm. and they fly me back to Chicago. So it's easier cost savings. They pay for my house in Houston. And I stayed with family back in Chicago during those two years, and I got my MBA in Houston while working with oil and gas and then doing the project. That's brilliant. That's what the South does to people. Just tell the truth. The South just drew you down here. Well, you know what? The thing was, I have older cousins that played football in Texas. Mm-hmm. But I also, I went to undergrad. I started off at Ole Miss, and I went to Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. That's where I finished my undergrad degree. So that's what brought me to the South. Mm-hmm. But understanding when you come from up north, mm-hmm. you come, you have a, a 24-hour, let's go, keep going, keep mm-hmm. going, keep going. That's a very fast pace that the South does not have. Mm-hmm. So that's where I used that when I came down here for during that time. Keep the mindset of, as if I live in Chicago, mm-hmm. but I'm in Houston. Yeah, We suckered you down here. Definitely sucked me down here. For the homes, the apartments at the time when I wasn't living for a mm-hmm. home, and for the education. Right. Let's kind of switch gears and go back to talking about your industry and some of your insights. What are your current trends or developments within your industry that's happening right now? So the current trends, as everybody knows, is a lot of AI, artificial intelligence. Mm. And when you're dealing with manufacturing and aerospace oil and gas, you can't really use that in all aspects, but the ideas of can we? How can I uh, bring automation in? Mm-hmm. Because of the work, the work operators, you look at the dollar amounts that you're spending, they're getting older, nobody's really beating down the doors of saying I want to work anymore. Right. There's three different worlds that we're living in now. Mm-hmm. You have the pre-COVID, where that you had people that wanted to work, they take care of the families. Then you had COVID, where that you had so many benefits of not having to work and not having to go anywhere and still make some money. So you lost that big gap within those 27 months, right? And then you have post-COVID of this is the new world and what we live in currently. So no one's looking for work. So whatever they have found in that 27 months, It's hard to grasp and get those young adults or those adults back into the work field of the blue collar working field. So you still have those that do not have high school education or higher education. 
that's in the manufacturing work field, but it's just not moving fast enough because we're going into AI automations where there's more technology based. Think about um, your grandmother, your uncle that is um, up there in years that just don't know how to use technology. Right. So now you have to try and teach them and teach them on a piece of equipment that can can harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a huge learning curve. I think AI is, is really forcing itself into all of the industries. Yes. We're all having to explore AI and get comfortable with the idea because it's not going away. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. It can be. You know, I was looking at some the cars that can drive themselves and, and kind of thinking about when I learned how to drive a car and I'm just right. wondering, man, these kids now, it's just it's, it's a whole new world. Yeah, it's the thing where that you, one would look at when we first started driving, you had to do the uh, the parallel park. Right. Where they now... They probably most, push a button. <laughs> most Yes, most adults at some point in time in their career, mm -hmm. whether it's a 19, 20, 2000, 2010 vehicle, they can push a button and it's going to assist them. They have cameras, 360 degree cameras that's going to let them know everything. So they really shouldn't have any cars on the road that have their bumper. <laughs> Look like uh, adult bumper cars, you know? <laughs> that's true. Now every SUV now almost comes with the rear view camera. I'm not yes. gonna lie, I'm addicted to mine. I can't, I'm looking at it two and three times when there's not even a point to look at it because I've gotten so accustomed to yes. that that camera. I've gotten accustomed to mine to the point where that, what I'm using reverse, I almost pull all the way into the actual mm -hmm. parking space, push the reverse on so the cameras can come on so I can make sure <laughs> uh -huh. I'm getting closer to the point. You know, asked me 15 years ago. I you just have to camera, let it ride. Did the old school, yes. roll uh -huh. back, come back around. But, you know, that's the life we live in. And it's a little scarier because mm -hmm. it's handicapping many of us, just like our phones. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I only know five phone numbers. Right. That's right. it. I, you know, I see both sides. It's definitely, it's definitely a conversation to, yeah. to be had, especially for the younger generation that didn't get the benefit of how we were raised. So for them, they know nothing else. So it, it is a great and, thing to think about. And just like signatures. Right. They're taking curse about them. That's yes. Cool oh, they already did that. Well, then right. they brought it back and then they tried to get rid well, of it. Taking, but they're yeah. not teaching it. Right. So your kid doesn't know how to write a curse. Doesn't mm -hmm. know how to do a signature. They're right. writing their name. Mm -hmm. So. That's true. That's just the simple things. Right. Exactly. So when we're talking about your industry, how do you stay updated? Because we're just kind of thinking about AI and all this new technology. How do you continuously learn within your field? I know you spoke earlier about continuous improvement. How do you do that? So how I stay updated um, outside of my peers. So we're all in many different organizations in our, within our network. Mm -hmm. So by me going to HBCU, the difference is we are very tight knit opposed to when I went to a PWI. As soon as I went to PWI, it's just a high and by, hey, thanks, we went to the same school. The HBCU network seems to be very, very close-knit, where they, you can ask the questions. They don't feel like they're hovering it and not giving it, giving it away. So our networking is very good, and we have, to have, we have some very good scholars in our program that we speak with. And when we go to these conventions, I just came back from a convention, in Chicago for five weeks. I was actually be able to be at home, well, I mean, for five days. And it's called FabTech. So I was looking for actually equipment and automation equipment to take out of some of our old dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. So that those are the events you have to go to, you have to read up on. You have to look at the different social media groups that have different things that work for your equipment. But within some of the equipment, is being done easier overseas. Mm -hmm. So now you find yourself, do you buy that equipment for here, for America, when I can get it done overseas and get shipped here for cheaper, dime on a dollar? What's the savings? Mm -hmm. So those are the battles a lot of manufacturing operations are looking at, and that's where the hard aid comes in. So it sounds like you get a lot of your learning from that peer-to-peer -peer conversation and the networking and yes. attending conferences and conventions and things like that. A lot of that, a lot of peer-to-peer. -peer. Right. A lot of peer-to-peer. -peer, I would say a lot of peer-to-peer -peer for me because in this industry, it's it can be very hard for some, for some ethnicities mm -hmm. where that they just you just don't get it. No matter how many times you ask a question, you can ask a question to, you, to a person within your same organization, they're not going to give you the information. 
So they're, they're more likely, you're more likely not to get the full story or you just get a quarter piece of a story and then you think you're going in the right direction, you might go left and find yourself and they won't be able to bring you in. So you have to use your core network mm -hmm. to say, has this worked at your organization? What has been working at your organization? Where are things going for you to move in the right direction? And you use your peers as those failures, but lesson learned. Remember, it comes down to your opinion about you that matters. The things of this world can cheer you on one day and then turn their back on you the next. But if you have a strong self-efficacy, neither will control your destiny. You know, that's something that's really powerful that I want to speak on just a little bit more because I think there's a lot of people that are afraid to network and they're afraid to just open their mouth and ask the question. You know, as it could be as simple as just texting the friends and opening up that conversation and having that dynamic. And so it's nice to hear that that's one of the ways that you are continuously learning within your field because that's something that I think, especially with this new generation, mm -hmm. where we're used to doing a lot of things right. behind the scenes, Correct. on the camera, you know, behind mm -hmm. a computer. And so it does take that opportunity where you have to sometimes get out in front of the camera and the phone and the Correct. technology and network. Yeah. And actually communicate with one another so that we can actually get to where we're trying to go. So I, I really enjoy hearing that. So what organizational challenges do you face? You actually kind of just mentioned some of them with being a minority within your field, but are there some other challenges that you face within your industry? It's a lot of industry uh, challenges I face. The fact that up until this year, 24 years of my career, I've been just the only within, as in management in the, in the group. So I have had others but they're not African American. So it's been, that has been hard. Or if you do have someone else in the group that's the uh, same ethnicity as African American, they're so scared to say anything if they feel like it's right or wrong that they have to hover and hold all the information. So therefore, you look like you don't know what you're doing. We have to be, if we're on a scale of one to 10, we have to be at 15 just to be looked at, just to be at seven. I have hired me, young adults that came from, forced to hire. They came from the UTs or the Texas A&Ms because this is Texas. And did they have to go grab the drive that I would want? No. When I hired my Texas A&M, and my Prairie View, and my Texas Southern, and my Tennessee State engineers, they run circles around But they don't have the benefit because of what they know and because of the school they go to. So it becomes that same ordeal with moving up in the industry. Being forced to Being for sometimes hire people from a certain university. Correct. Where there could be some other folks that are more deserving or more qualified, getting a little bit pigeonholed into, hey, this is the way that our company has done it and this is what we're going to continue to do. Correct, because there's no, there isn't any anyone in the management to say, I'm pulled. They're pulling from, they're, we're not pulling from our group, but we're not in a position to even pull. That part. So it makes it harder. And then you have some that, you know, when you do pull, they do it for a number and they find a reason to let that person go. Wow. And they do nothing wrong. That's a definitely a, a real challenge that you're facing. It's, uh, it's impressive that you're able to matriculate through the system and overcome those challenges. Because it's difficult. It's hard because you're in Texas and it's at will. In Chicago, you have union bases not at will. So a person can, can, can document, why did I just get let go? Tell me the reasons why. I can walk away, but tell me why I got let go. Mm -hmm. Document it. So while you're documenting on your side, it can be documented. It can go to whatever powers it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Whether that person, you can let me go. I don't want to be in this organization, but I need to be documented on what took place. So the next person behind me, doesn't get messed over. Right. Or Texas. if it's something that I really need to work on, I can improve on it so that when I come into my next role, I'm coming in with that knowledge to make sure that I don't repeat the same thing again. And was I given the tools? Mm -hmm. Was I given the proper tools to do my job? If you told me I had to do something, but you never gave me the tools to do it, now you're letting me go. You never gave me the tools of what you actually expect me or want me to do for this role. 
All right. We want to make sure we're setting our employees up for success. So it's all about the best opportunity to get to where you're going to be at and be with a good group. Right. But when you got to make money, take care of family, some things you just got to take, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So are there any motivations and passions that really help you sustain with yourself within this role? So what motivates you or what makes you passionate about your work? What motivates me a lot about my work and what makes for this, the organization that I'm with right now, I'm not the only. That's when I said I want to walk away from being a consultant for seven years and be home and not have to travel at 100%. I was interviewed by an organization where I saw more people like me at the table and it was very diverse. And I felt if I needed help, I was going to get help. If I needed certain growths, I was going to get growths within it. I was not going. I was not looked at in the interviewing process as a ninety ten, you know, a ninety ten eighty twenty. Even if a person comes up with the sixty forty, what is important to that organization? Mm -hmm. Is it important to your organization for growth and drive? And a person that does have some of the willpower and the and the tools, they might not have everything in the toolbox, but the things that a person does have, they're credited for, they are appreciated for. And that's the drive. And I love manufacturing because understanding that within my years of my career, being a part of everything within all four walls is having your hands in something. So every day is a new day. So you don't get bored, mm -hmm. but you always have projects, but you always have something to learn something new to put in your toolbox mm -hmm. and the things you have new to put in your toolbox if you're in leadership you can pass those leadership tools down to the next person as being a servant leader. so when you're thinking about your career and your industry are there any role models or anybody specific that has helped you along the way have there been others that have helped you get to where you are today yes it's, it's about it's been about like three people three three solid people that one indirectly and two Directly, as I had one mentor in grad school when I moved, when I came here mm -hmm. from for grad school and when I was working for BP of Oil and Gas. And then it was another one that was back home in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, and it was my uncle at that one. And, and the third one was at this actual celebrity, mm -hmm. but it's the drive. Right. It's the drive of that person and everything that they touch. It's gold. Mm -hmm. They don't stop. Mm -hmm. And me being a former athlete, understanding that and wanting to do that later on, and you find your, your pivots that you grow up and you don't do. Mm -hmm. And you, as an adult, you start seeing things saying, okay, I need to do better. I need to push more drive into it. So I use that as when I'm mentoring young adults and I use it for myself. I can't just keep mentoring young adults and getting them in college and not using those same tools for myself. Right. So it's just something, it's a field where that is not a lot of us. There's a lot of us in the hourly pay, but not a lot of us in the salary pay. We need to change that. We got to change it. Yeah. So therefore, I'm always believing in bringing someone up. Right. That's part of my servant leader. But I had to get there. And while I'm getting there, I'm steady bringing someone up. That's how it has to be. Yeah. That's exactly how. So my daughter actually wants to be an engineer. So Come see, on. yeah, so I got to pick your brain. Math oh, yeah. and science for me, I'm like, Phew. but my daughter, she loves it. So I, I definitely will have to we'll have to talk off camera later on. Oh, yeah. But so you mentioned quite a bit, and you may not be able to answer this right away, and it's okay, and it may even be a no. But if you could do it all over again, would you do anything differently? If I could do it all over again. To get you where you are today. Where I am today. Is there I, anything you would do differently? There are some things I would do differently. Okay. And I would still do them, but I think I will get to where I am right now faster. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things I would have done that I had the opportunity to put in my toolbox that I would be called spade a spade. I was being lazy. I wanted to go party. I wanted to be super single, make good money, but just out there, you know, living life, still having doing good within my career, but not doing the things for the future long term. I saw the picture long term because the money was there, but 
putting the other things ahead. And if I would have done some of those things, who knows where I'd be at. So what advice would you give someone who is interested in being in the in, in your industry? So somebody else who wants to be a mechanical engineer, or you maybe even because you've done so many different aspects within your field, what advice would you give someone who's interested in doing the same thing? I would tell them to one, get a mentor. Two, don't be ashamed or afraid to work different roles mm -hmm. within manufacturing. Whatever it takes to get in the door, you have to outshine everyone. Be a sponge and try to be a subject matter in certain things that they can't deny you. So right now it's technology. So if you are becoming good at automation, nobody can take that from you. That's gonna get you in the door. That's gonna understand that's something that the organization is gonna be moving towards anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna help your appetite. That's gonna move you further along within just manufacturing and get a business degree as well because that's going to help you with your management. So th those three tips, he gave us three. That was, that's a, those are good ones. We got another one. Oh, and maybe four. And read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Who Moved My Cheese? That's actually a good one. That's a good one. Well, I hope that you enjoyed being here today. I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today. I've learned a lot from you and I enjoyed our conversation. It's always a joy to have the neighbor come <laughs> and chat with me. So thank you for being here, Rob. Yeah, thank you. And that wraps up another episode of Chat with Charlie. Thank you all so much for joining me today as we explore various topics aimed to help you take your career to new heights. I hope you found today's discussion valuable and insightful. Remember, growth comes from continuous learning and taking actionable steps towards your goals. I'd love to hear from you all about today's content. So connect with me on social media at Linen Prep and leave a comment or question to keep this chat going. Be sure to tune in to next week's episode where we'll dive deep into the minds of another industry professional. It's gonna be another informative and engaging conversation that you won't wanna miss. And if you like Chat with Charlie, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your support means the world to me and helps us reach more people ready to level up their expertise. Thank you again for being a part of our career advancement journey. And remember, strive for excellence, not perfection. Keep pushing forward and never stop investing in yourself. Until next time, bye.